hey, congratulations on your participation on this mockumentary near myth, the Oscar Knight story. Thank you. I'm not even sure I would agree with that classification or that the director would agree with that. But uh, I'm really excited uh, that it might actually finally see the light of day because uh, I think the pandemic sort of got in the way um, in 2020. So uh, I'm excited to see it again. Well, how, how, about, this? how about this? What, what, how do you describe this film? I would describe it as unclassifiable, <laughs> but it's certainly, um, I would describe it as maybe the antidote to the um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, because, which I loved, uh, I just saw it for the second time, and I'm actually reading the book. Uh, I'm all fascinated with Hollywood, uh, and uh, so this is a totally different picture, and yet, it's it shows such a, like a different side of the city of, of Hollywood. It goes from the twenties and through this character of Oscar Knight, who's quite the character. Uh, um, Hollywood from the twenties all the way until the into the nineties, I believe, or even into the early two thousands. Uh, goes people are telling stories, and there's a lot of stuff people don't know. So, <laughs> however you want to classify it, it's if you have any interest in 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 these subject matters, it's 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 very entertaining, and uh, I learned a lot. <laughs> and we've all yeah, <laughs> so we've all come in contact with Oscar Knight at some point, but a lot of people still don't know who he is, and he's a big part of what Hollywood is all about. <laughs> Obviously. So um, when, when Scott approached you to, uh, to be a part of this, um, how, how did he pitch this to you, Scott, the director? Uh, well, his main pitch, he was uh, fascinated with a possible uh, connection uh, between me and the Oscar Knight family. Uh, he had heard some rumor that we were related uh, in some way, which I don't, uh, I don't think there's any evidence uh, of that. Uh, but then he said, "But Rudolph, there's also no evidence to the contrary, is there?" I'm like, "No, there also isn't any evidence that I'm not related." So, if that's how, you, but anyways, there, there were some stories connected to that, to that, and. Uh, the big story, I think, which uh, is dealt with in the film, too, is the, the, the John Travolta connection, which I can't tell the same story here because it's, it's in the film. But uh, there was a very curious uh, episode where, where Travolta uh, took me to Braunschweig, Germany, because he was fascinated with uh, seeing the house where Oscar and I grew up in. So... Um, I think in Hollywood, there's a lot of people who are obsessed with Oscar Knight. <laughs> did, did, so did that, you... that was Scott to me as well. He said, Rudolph, you have no idea how many people are, are obsessed with Oscar Knight. I'm going to make a film about it. And I said, well, I just have a few little connections here and there. So just sure, let's do it. <laughs> sure, let's, let, I'll, I'll, I'll play along. So um, when did you first heard of Oscar Knight? <laughs> when, when did I first hear of him? Yeah. Well, I, when I was a kid, I guess, my childhood, you know, I, I never actually saw his movies. I wasn't that interested. I didn't even have a TV. Uh, I didn't really see any movies. Uh, I just saw his films later on. So I learned a lot more about him also through Scott's film that I eventually saw and you know there's a lot of information about him but uh yeah I obviously he, he was uh even though the film is called Near Myth the Oscar Knight story he was he was a bit of a myth in in and not only in good ways but also you know he he ultimately failed uh, in some of the things he wanted to accomplish uh so but it's definitely a name that you come across growing up in Germany. <laughs> Did, you, you are also in the industry uh, for, 
for, uh, you know, you, you, your career has spanned across a great years yourself. Did you have a very similar path when you wanted to be part of this Hollywood industry? A similar path? No, not at all. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, the myth of Oscar Knight coming to Hollywood in the 20s and being offered a directing job on day one of arriving there. Uh, if that's true or not, it doesn't, but like that's, that wasn't really my journey. Uh, so mine was really a lot more ordinary than his. You know, I just uh, started as an actor in New York and uh, uh, kind of, moved to Hollywood uh, a few years after that, but um, I was just moderately working actor, uh, whereas, you know, Oscar Knight obviously was, uh, you know, a star director, just Oscar nominations and, and so forth. So I, <laughs> I would not even uh, put myself in the same league well, Oscar Knight has really lofty high goals for himself throughout his entire career. What, what, what were your goals in, the, in an industry like this? Um, well, I always just wanted to do work that, that has more than two dimensions. Sort of just, uh, uh, I wanted to be able to work uh, in telling stories and uh, uh, be a part of that as an actor, you know, to tell stories that, that have different levels and just not to play only bad guy, but, but bad guy with some texture or a good person with also like just three dimensional people. And that was always my, my goal to be part of storytelling. Whereas, I mean, if, uh, you know, Oscar Knight being a filmmaker and he wanted to make history, I think he wanted to become a legend. I think that might have often um, been at the forefront and that might have actually been his downfall to, it wasn't about the stories he was telling, but it was it, about himself in the end. So I think he, he wanted to believe in, in his own myth so badly that he forgot his own roots that he was actually, you know, as a kid, he was obsessed with storytelling. And maybe that's the only similarity. A lot of actors sort of grow up like just badly wanting to tell stories somehow. And, uh, but I think he got away from that. And um, I never had a chance to get away from that because I, I, I was never nominated for Oscars. I wasn't working in those, in those spheres that he was moving in. But um, yeah, that was the similarity. And that's also where the similarities end. How, how, how does uh, one stay in the industry if, uh, if it's so tough, you know, like uh, for Oscar Knight? I mean, he, he was so close. He was so close. So close. Yes, <laughs> he was so close. Well, I think that's what kept him in there, the, the, the belief that it wasn't possible that uh, he knew he was going to win. He knew he was going to finally, like, get the big prize and like maybe we shouldn't like call it by its name but he I mean that was his firm belief I think that's what kept propelling him to try and I think that's also what got him off track because I think if he had just focused on the content of his storytelling uh he might have found an easier way to to get the the recognition that he was so badly he, he was he was looking for um yeah now it's too bad that you never had a chance to work with uh, oscar knight yourself but uh what what would have been if you had it, that chance and uh and are there other great directors you would have loved to work with oh i mean I mean, all those those legendary directors of uh, of old Hollywood. Uh, I mean, sure. I mean, I, I would have that would have been a dream to work in that world uh, of like sort of the the myth of Hollywood. Whereas, I mean, the, I never even even though I was in Hollywood and I am in Hollywood uh, a lot. 
it's not the Hollywood that you think of when when you think of the myth of Hollywood. You always, I, I always think of the past, the history of Hollywood, and um, um, boom, I would probably, I, I mean, Orson Welles. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're if I get my pick, <laughs> I would. I would have loved to be in a film noir, really. So, and in mm -hmm. one of those great film noirs, uh, maybe to play like a detective or something. Maybe that will be if I could have like one wish. Uh, that will be it. I don't. I, you know, I I watched your uh, demo reel, and you have played great roles, even though you haven't. Thank you. Know, you know, like a film noir yourself, but you have played Dracula. I mean. Not once, but twice, I believe, which is. Yes. Yeah. Which, which. Yeah, it, twice. Quite itself, it's a, it's quite a feat <laughs> in Hollywood. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was, uh, I felt very privileged to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's immortal, so I could play him a third time at some point. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> You're never too old to play a vampire. So we'll see. Uh, that was certainly a great experience to play because I played the real uh, the historic uh, Dracula that, who wasn't a vampire. And then, you know, I played in, in the, for the Buffy uh, series, I played the, the vampire, the mythological. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, by the way, I think Oscar Knight saw that. Yeah. I was told. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He did. Uh, I was told that he didn't like it also. So, uh, but, you know, I take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> the great part of this documentary, it goes to the history of Hollywood. What were, what were some of your favorite films in Hollywood yourself in cinematic history? I'm, I'm a big fan of the Westerns. Uh, the, the 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 classic westerns like the old the old uh, Clint Eastwood westerns the the uh, even um, the good the bad and the ugly uh, and fistful of dollars uh, uh, ironically that's not really Hollywood is it Sergio Leone that was shot in Italy but um, to me that's also classic Hollywood um, and, and like I said I'm a big fan of the film noir genre. Um, I like the sort of detective movies. Uh, Chinatown, one of my all-time favorites. The uh, The Third Man. Uh, so, like, there's certain classic films that I I could watch over and over. The Bogart movie. <laughs> Those oh. are great selections for for you, Rudolph. Now, yeah. I'm like, let, me, yeah. let me let me start wrapping things up with you because you know. The Oscar night story is a great story because, you know, it is, it is, it goes through cinematic history, talking about the cinema, his great feats and interviews with, you know, a great actor like, like yourself. So what are some of the upcoming projects you have uh, coming soon? Hopefully a third time uh, as Dracula or maybe a Moby Dick movie. <laughs> Well, I hope, uh, I wish Oscar Knight was still uh, alive so I could do uh, maybe his second attempt at, at doing the ultimate Moby Dick uh, film version. Um, I don't know. I, my last Hollywood film was a uh, Ford Ferrari that I had a, a small role in. Um, I don't know what's next, to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm over here in Europe and uh, I hope the pandemic <laughs> is, is over at some point this year. So uh, um, hopefully I'll, I'll do something really good and interesting again. <laughs> and then I'll talk to you again. When you know, that, <laughs> right now I'm excited, I'm excited that this one's coming out, uh, the Oscar Knight story. And, and uh, I'm not sure when exactly and how, but apparently it is coming out. So that'll be, uh, that'll be exciting. <laughs> and, and real fast before, before I let you go, how easy is it for you to drop your accent when you take on some of these roles? Well, it, it it's you, you don't uh, as an actor you don't think of it as dropping an accent. You think of it as putting on an accent. 
So whatever accent uh, the character should have, that's what you work on then. And, and whatever accent you speak with uh, normally will be, hope if you, if you have the time to prepare and, and if you do it well, it's, you won't hear that. You, you'll hear the other accent that you're speaking with. So dropping an accent is 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 just the wrong attitude. <laughs> you, you have to put on an accent. So if I was to speak in a German accent, I wouldn't drop my other accent, but I would put on a different one on top of it. You see what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do see what what you mean. Yeah. This is terrific, Rudolph. Well, anyways. Let's, uh, let's do this again, and hopefully I get to talk to you on your, on your next great film. The next project, when something comes out, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll message you. Maybe we can have another chat. Let's do that. Thank you very much. Hey, okay. Stay safe in Europe. Thank you. Great talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.